Hello and welcome back. Before we get started with our video, let me show you this amazing to-do list that I discovered in the Google Sheets, which is available by default. So if I click this one, this one will appear before me. So, so if I click any of the check boxes in here, for example, let's click this one. As you can see, the task will be removed from our to-do list by strike through. So in this video, what we will do is I'll show you the step-by-step -step process of exactly creating the same to-do list in Google Sheets by yourself. So before anything else, first of all, you will add a new sheet in here. So the first thing that we need to do in here is to merge these two cells. Even though I'm not a fan of merging cells in Google Sheets or Excel, but for the sake of this video, we will merge these two and we'll write down to do in here. In order for this to have the same format, I'll click this one and click the paint format and then I'll apply it in here. So this one will be the same as our previous one. I'll make this cell bigger and for this one, I'll pick the same color as we have for the cells on the left in here. I'll make these smaller, we'll add the green color to these as well. Next thing will be first column is the status, then we have the date and then we have the task description or whatever it is. Let's make this a little bit wider. So under the status in here, I'll have the check boxes. So I'll select all the cells until I have the task names and go to insert in here, I'll pick the checkbox. So as you can see, our checkboxes are working perfectly. Next thing will be to have the due dates for all the tasks that we have in here. So for the time being, I'll write down just one, one, then I'll have one, two and one, three, and we'll have the same type of data for the others as well. We'll assume these are dates, of course. And for the task names, I'll write down task one, and then I'll have task number two. And in your case, what you can do is you will write down the full description of your task. So next, once we check any of the boxes in here, the text in front of it and the dates, the a specific formatting should be applied on them. For example, in our case in here, we have them in a more dull color and at the same time, the strike through is applied once we check the boxes in here. So for that purpose, what I need to do is I'll select all the cells in here and then go to format and conditional formatting. So from here, the format rules should be, let's select custom formula and here I'll write down equal sign. Then we have the cell in here, which is cell A4. I'll make the column absolute and I'll leave the row number as it is. Then I'll equal sign true. If this is true, the formatting that I want to be applied is number one, the text color should be, for example, not black. It should be gray color and then strike through should be applied to that. And then I'll click OK. Now let's see what happens if I check or uncheck these. So if I check this, as you can see, the task will be removed from here. And at the same time, this one. So the green color in here is if we go in here, uh, we had a green color by default. So I can remove that color and apply none. And as you can see, the green color will, would be removed. So our action tracker is basically ready. The last step is to have something like this. So for example, if I check any of these, as you can see, the number increases. Now we have two out of three tasks completed. If I check this, three out of three tasks would be completed. And if I uncheck any of those, this number will be automatically changed. So in order to do this, in here I'll write down equal sign, concatenate or various values together. Number one will be count if open parenthesis if in this range so if in here the values are true or in other words the check boxes are checked then i'll put a comma in here and this will be concatenated 
with a division sign. So write down double quotes slash and then have the slash space double quotes again and close parenthesis. And next thing that it needs to concatenate is the total number of tasks that we have in here. For that purpose, I'll use the count a function. So basically what count a function does is it will count all the cells that are not blank. So write down count a, open parenthesis, and I'll select all the cells in here and close parenthesis. And next thing that it needs to concatenate with this is double quotes, space, and then write down completed. And then double quotes again and press enter. So basically, as you can see, five or 10 tasks are completed. So if I check another box, it will be six, seven, 10. And if I keep on checking them, the numbers will be updated as well. So this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you have found the content of this video helpful. If you did so, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and following us on Instagram or LinkedIn for more useful tips and insights about project management, civil engineering, and data analysis. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.